Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to the first part of section 7.3, Thermochemistry and Cooking Fuels. First, we're going to start talking about calculating heat absorbed and heat released in a system. We've gone through this in class briefly, but here are some example problems to help you out um, in your practice and your homework. So, <clears throat> we've talked about in any heating process, sometimes heat is released, sometimes it's absorbed, and you can calculate that heat given this equation here. Q equals mc delta t. Q is the heat released. When heat is released, we have a negative value for Q. When heat is absorbed, we'll have a positive value of Q. M is the mass in grams. C is a specific heat capacity. Specific heat capacity, defined here, is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance, one degree Celsius. So how much energy must you put into a substance to make one gram of it increase by one degree Celsius. That is the specific heat capacity. Lastly, in this equation, we have delta T. It's a change in temperature. So that's your T final, your final temperature minus your initial temperature to get the change in temperature for your, for your entire heat transfer. So here's an example problem. 100 grams of four degrees Celsius water is heated until its temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. If the specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius, calculate the amount of heat energy needed to cause this rise in temperature. Note that every different substance has its own specific heat capacity. They're all individualized. So waters is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. Different substances will have a different heat capacity. So let's try to solve this. First thing we want to do is just figure out what our variables are here to my left, and fill them in. We don't know the heat. That's what the question is asking for. So calculate the amount of heat energy. We know the mass is 100 grams. C, the specific heat. We're talking about water here. Specific heat of water is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And by changing temperature, well, I said change in temperature is T final minus T initial. Final temperature minus initial temperature. So that gives us 37 degrees minus 4 degrees Celsius. 37 minus 4 will give you 33 degrees Celsius as your change in temperature. Now, let's begin to solve. Our equation is Q equals MC delta T. Now I'm going to sub substitute and solve for this equation. Solve for Q, excuse me. Q is equal to M, which is 100 grams, times C, which is 4.184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And I am putting all my units because I'm a chemist and we keep track of those things. And my delta T, I could have done that over here, but I did it here. We have 33 degrees Celsius. Now it's a multiplication problem. I simply multiply 100 times 4.184 times 33. My degrees Celsius cancel here. My grams cancel there. I'm left with joules, which is the unit of energy. That's what I want. Heat is equal to 13,794 joules. And this is a positive Q here. Because heat was absorbed by the water. The water went from 4 degrees Celsius to 37 degrees Celsius. It increased in temperature. Heat energy was absorbed by the water. If I got colder, then heat energy would have been lost by the water, and my value would have been a negative value. Here's another example. This is a little different. It says, to what temperature... To what temperature? That's the question already. To what temperature will a 50 gram piece of glass raise if it absorbs 5,275 joules of heat? And its specific heat capacity is 0 0.50 joules per gram degree Celsius. The initial temperature of glass is 20 degrees Celsius, or of the glass. Now, here's what's different about this problem we're not dealing with water. We're dealing with a different substance, thus that different substance, which is glass, has a different specific heat capacity, which is 0 0.5 
joules per gram degree Celsius. Also, we're not being asked to solve for the total heat. We're being asked to solve for to what temperature. So if we're going to what temperature, we're ask, they're asking for the final temperature. So after you've added 5,275 joules of energy into this glass, and the temperature started at 20 degrees Celsius, what temperature will you be at if the heat capacity is 0.5 joules per gram degree Celsius? We solve it the same way, with the same approach anyways. What's given to us? We know Q is 5,275 joules. The mass of this glass is 50 grams. The specific heat is 0 0.50 joules per gram degree Celsius. Delta T. Now, delta T, we know that this is T final minus T initial. We have T initial. We don't have T final. So we have to find Tf. Our equation, Q equals mc delta T. Um, I'm going to rearrange here before I put numbers in. Now let's just, let's just rearrange and solve for delta T by itself. So I solve for delta T, and I want to divide both sides by mc. So delta T is equal to heat over the mass times the specific heat. Let's solve for this, and then once we have a value here, we can break delta T down into its individual components here and plug it in. So if we do this, Q is 5,275 joules divided by MC divided by 50 grams times 0.5 joules per gram degree Celsius. When I do this, delta T is equal to, C, I think that's two, two eleven. Sorry about that. 211 degrees Celsius. Now I say that because joules cancels out with joules, grams cancels out with grams. 5,275 divided by 50 divided by 0.5 will give you 211 in degrees Celsius is the only unit that's left over here. Now that's what delta T equals, but we want to know the final temperature. So we know delta T equals Tf minus Ti and that equals 211 degrees Celsius, but we know that Ti is 20, so I'm going to rewrite this over here. Tf minus 20 degrees Celsius equals 211 degrees Celsius. I'm going to add, add 20 degrees Celsius to both sides to isolate this Tf. And Tf equals 211 plus 20 is 231 degrees Celsius. That would be your final answer. So if you started out from a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius in glass, well 50 grams of glass had a specific heat of 0.5 joules per gram degree Celsius, and you input 5,275 joules of energy, your final temperature would be 231 degrees Celsius. So apply these same concepts and same thinking of mode of setting up your problem to each and every problem that involves specific heat and heat absorption versus heat release. Take notes, guys. Hope this helped.